Which one of you is it who has some connection to that business at Longridge Farm? You're not being very sensible, you know. One of you is in danger, deadly danger, and I've got to know which one that is. Very well, I'll ask you one by one. You first, since you seem to have arrived here more or less by accident. Uh, Miss Perry? Per, per uh, But I know nothing. Nothing but what you have said already. I am a stranger to this country, and I know nothing about these local affairs of these uh, bygone years. Right. Mrs. Boyle. And I, actually, I consider it an impertinence on why I should have anything to do with such a distressing business. Miss? Casewell. Leslie Casewell. I've never heard of Longridge Farm before, and I know nothing about it. You, sir? Metcalf. Major. Read about the case in the papers at the time. I was stationed at Edinburgh then. No personal knowledge. And you? Christopher Wren. I was a mere child at the time. I barely remember hearing about it. And that's all you have to say. Any of you? Well, all right. If one of you ends up murdered, you'll have yourselves to blame. Now then, Mr. Ralston, can I have a look around the house? <laughs> oh, my dears. How melodramatic. He's rather attractive, isn't he? I've always admired the police. So stern and hard-boiled. <sighs> Quite the thrill, this whole business. Three blind mice. How does the tune go? Really, Mr. Rand? Don't you like it? But it's a signature tune. The signature of a murderer. Just fancy what a kick he must be getting out of it. A whole melodramatic rubbish. <laughs> I don't believe a word of it. Oh, but just wait, Mrs. Boyle, till I creep up behind you and you feel my hands on your throat. Stop! That'll do, Christopher. It's a poor joke anyway. In fact, it's not a joke at all. <laughs> oh, but it is. That's just what it is. A madman's joke. That's what makes it so deliciously macabre. <laughs> if only you could see the look on your faces. <laughs> Such an ill-mannered and neurotic young man. West Giles, taking our policeman on a conducted tour of the house. Your friend, the architect, has been acting in the most abnormal manner. Young fellows seem very nervy nowadays. I dare say he'll grow out of it. Nerves? I have no patience with people with nerves. I haven't gotten any. No? Perhaps that's just as well for you, Mrs. Boyle. Why do you say that? I think you were actually one of the magistrates on the bench at the time. In fact, you were responsible for sending those three children to Longridge Farm. Really, Major Metcalf? I could hardly be held responsible. We had reports from welfare workers, and the farm people seemed very excited to have the children. Quite satisfactory, really. I mean, fresh eggs and milk, and a great out-of-doors life. Kicks, blows, starvation, and a thoroughly vicious couple. But how was I to know? The couple was very civilly well-spoken. I was right the whole time. It was you. One tries to do a public duty, and all one gets is abuse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you must forgive me, but I, I do find this very amusing. <laughs> I enjoy myself greatly. <laughs> I never did like that woman. Where did she come from last night? I don't know. Looks a bit suspicious to me. Makes her face up too, rouge and powder. Disgusting. She must be quite old too. Yet she moves like a much younger woman. You'll be wanting more wood. I'll go and get it. It's so dark, and yet it's only four in the afternoon. Now, where did I leave my stance? What a horrid little tune that is. But don't you like it? Reminds you of your childhood. Perhaps an unhappy childhood. I was very happy as a child. You were lucky. M weren't you happy? No. Well, I'm sorry. But... Oh, that's a long time ago. One gets over things. I suppose so. What doesn't one? Damned hard to say. They say that what happens when you're a child matters more than anything else. They say... They say who says? Psychologists. Oh, humbug. Just a damned lot of nonsense. 
I have no use for psychologists and psychiatrists. I've never really had much to do with them. A good thing for you, you have it. It's all a lot of hooey, the whole thing. Life's what you make of it. Go straight ahead. Don't look back. One can't always help looking back. Nonsense. It's a question of willpower. Perhaps. I know. I expect you're right. But sometimes things happen to make you remember. Don't give in. Turn your back on them. <laughs> Is that really the right way? I, I wonder. Perhaps, perhaps that's all wrong. Perhaps one ought to really face them. Depends what you're talking about. Sometimes I hardly know what I'm talking about. Nothing from the past is going to affect me, except in the way that I want it to. Well, everything's all right upstairs. Uh, what's in here? Drawing room? Would you mind shutting that door? This place is full of drafts. Sorry, madam, but I've got to get a lay of the land. Uh, Molly, what is all this? Good art you've got here, Mr. Ralston. Well, I suppose that concludes the tour. I think I shall now make my report to Superintendent Hogbin. But you can't telephone. The line's dead. What? Since when? Major Mac have tried it just after you arrived. But it was all right earlier. Superintendent Hogbin got through all right. Oh, yes. I suppose since then, the lines are down with snow. I wonder. They may have been cut. Cut? But who would have cut them? Mr. Ralston, just how much do you know about these people staying in your guest house? I... Well, we don't really know anything about uh -huh. them. Uh, Miss Boyle wrote from a Bournemouth hotel, and Major Metcalf from, where was it again? Uh, Lemington. Lemington. Wren wrote from Hampstead, and the Casewell woman from an address in Kensington. Parabicini, as we told you, appeared pretty much out of the blue last night. Still, I suppose they've all got ration books, you know, that sort of thing. I shall go into all of that, of course, but there's not much reliance to be placed on that sort of evidence, you know? But even if this killer is coming for one of us, well, we're quite safe now. Because of the snow. No one can get here till it melts. Unless, Mrs. Ralston, he's here already. Here already? Why not, Mr. Ralston? All of your guests arrived here yesterday afternoon, some hours after the murder of Mrs. Stanning. Plenty of time to get here. But except for Miss Paravicini, they had all booked beforehand. Well, why not? These sorts of crimes are planned. Crimes? But there's only been one crime, and that was on Culver Street. What makes you think there'll be one here? Well, that it will happen? No, I hope to prevent that, but... That it will be attempted? Yes. I just can't believe it. It's all too fantastic. It's not fantastic, Mr. Ralston. It's just facts. You've got a description of what this man looked like in London. Medium height, indeterminate build. Let me see here. Long, dark overcoat, soft felt hat. Face was covered by a muffler. He spoke in a whisper. There are some darkish overcoats on your coat rack right now. One of them is yours, Mr. Ralston. There are lightish felt hats. I still don't believe it. You see, it's this telephone wire that bothers me. If it's been cut... I must get on with the vegetables. Is there an extension? I beg your pardon. Did you say something? Yes, Mr. Ralston. I said, is there an extension? Ah, uh, yes, upstairs in our bedroom. Go up there and try it for me, will you? To understand what I may term as the mechanics of fear, who left this you window have to study open? the precise effect produced by the human mind. Imagine, for instance, that you are alone in a room. It is late in the afternoon. A door opens softly behind you. Oh, it's just you. We interrupt I this can't program, seem to, find a program to bring you a brief to. update on the what lion are you doing? murder. Why did you turn out the light?
Why is it all dark? What's a noise? Ah! 